soir, mesdames et messieurs, merci d'être venus. Alors ce soir, euh, nous aurons plusieurs euh, choses à, à faire et à voir. Euh, J'aimerais bien vous présenter Madame Rosakova qui est éditrice et euh, l'un des co-auteurs d'un livre sur euh, l'histoire de euh, la photographie de, de l'Europe européenne. Euh, C'est une œuvre qui aura plusieurs tomes. Euh, nous en sommes deux, deux tomes déjà, le troisième va sortir bientôt. Et à chaque fois, ce sont des, des livres vraiment très important. Je pense que c'est une exclusivité euh, historique, en fait, puisque nous avons euh, ici le, le livre sur, sur euh, chacune des euh, photographies nationales de, de toute l'Europe, euh, écrit toujours par les plus grands spécialistes de chacun des pays. Voilà, pour l'instant, euh, je pense que le livre n'est pas tout à fait disponible, mais il le sera, et madame vous dira des détails tout à l'heure. Ensuite, j'ai le plaisir de vous présenter monsieur le professeur Vladimir Pergus, un grand photographe et historien de la photographie, qui est aussi le commissaire de cette magnifique exposition, que vous pouvez admirer, et qui va, qui tiendra une, une conférence sur le sujet de cette exposition, donc euh, l'avant-garde de la photographie tchèque. Et euh, voilà, et après, après il faut qu'on termine, puisque euh, vers 7 heures, il faut qu'on quitte la salle, étant donné qu'à 20 heures, nous avons un concert de jazz dans le cadre de, du Festival international de jazz, Jazz Colors, que le centre tchèque a fondé il y a 12 années. Voilà, et nous accueillons donc euh, le musicien de la Roumanie. Euh, je devrais aussi vous signaler que nous avons ici plusieurs membres de la famille euh, Resson, que peut-être que, que peut-être qu'on vous pouvez montrer, voilà, voilà les ils sont, en tout ils sont six, hein, ils sont six. Voilà, donc euh, la famille Resson, le Resson est vraiment bien représenté ici. Est-ce que j'ai oublié quelque chose Bon, ben voilà, ben, je, je, pour une fois, je n'ai rien oublié, ce qui est parfait. Alors, je vous donne la parole. Je... Ah oui, ah oui, et puis, euh, quand même, j'ai oublié quelque chose. Euh, pour l'occasion de l'exposition, euh, l'école, euh, l'université de, 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 de Papa, où il y a une grande chaire de, de la photographie fondée par le euh, professeur Burgus et le centre tchèque, ont édité euh, un magnifique catalogue où vous pouvez avoir tous les photos que vous voyez ici, et même plus, puisque nous n'avons pas pu euh, présenter toutes les photographies. Hein. Il y en a deux ou trois qui manquent, puisqu'il n'y avait pas de place. En tout cas, euh, c'est disponible à l'accueil au prix modique de 10 euros. <rire> voilà. Euh, je crois que cette fois-ci, c'est absolument tout. Nous sommes extrêmement fiers d'avoir ici nos invités. Euh, je dois signaler aussi que la présence de madame est, est, est en fait assurée par euh, euh, la collaboration avec l'Institut Slovaque. Alors, le directeur, M. Jurkovic, se cache au fond de la salle et il est là, bien présent. Voilà, et c'est déjà vraiment c'est tout ce que je voulais dire. Et ce que j'ai oublié, c'est pas grave, puisque si j'ai oublié, c'est pas très grave. Allez, bonne soirée et à vous, à vous nous jouer. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. I am sorry, but my French is really not good. So I am not able to speak to you in French. Oh, sorry. <coughs> so ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's really nice to see so many people at this presentation and also at this exhibition. So, uh, as Mr. Director said, I will start with presentation of the project The History of European Photography, which I brought here from Bratislava. It's a, it's a long-term project which started in 2006 with the 
help of Vladimir Birkus uh, and a couple of other um, experts in photography, there was this idea that there is a big gap in the um, in the theory and in the factography of photography within Europe. So there was, um, of course, we know that there were many books published on the history of photography, but most of the books cover photography in France, in England, in the USA. But uh, you will unlikely find photography from Bulgaria, Albania, Belarus in these big books. Therefore, uh, this project was somehow growing, growing in the minds of the experts of Václav Matej, Vladimir Birgus, Jelimir Koscevic, Jerry Badger, Miral Tyson is here. <laughs> um, and the decision was made that we have to do something about it and we have to present not only East European photography but European photography to the public, to the experts, to schools, to students, to raise the knowledge in what is happening, what has been happening in photography in the 20th century. We started with 1900 to 1938, it's the first books you see, and this is a hot, hot new project, new, a new version. It's the second volume covering the years 1939 to 1969, and that is also the reason why Vladimir Birgus kindly asked me and Václav to present this project because it is connected also with the period of time that this exhibition covers. So um, I would just like to say basic facts because as I know we don't have that much time. You can see here that's the first volume and I will show you a little bit from the Czech, Czech photography, Czech chapter in the second volume. That's why we are here, because this is really one week old now. So, each book covers 35 countries in Europe, starting from uh, countries like Albania, Belarus, Bulgaria, Ukraine. We, we cover Russia, Germany, France, Czech Republic, Slovakia, uh, Netherlands. We have the author, as Vladimir mentioned, Miral Tyson here with us. Thank you for coming. And um, also Luxembourg, for example, and many other countries. Um, we just really find it important to find the right people to write good, readable, understandable texts on the history of photography. Not only facts, not only factographical uh, text which will say this was the day when this happened and this was the day when this happened but these are really stories that each expert from each country tells the story is about photography it's about social political background of the country about the history of the country and all the important events that has been happening in the period of time that each book covers now I will show you the preview of the Czech chapter written by Vladimir Birgus and Jan Mochoch. And also I will show you, of course, uh, a little bit of the Slovak. Um, Slovak chapter which was written by Václav Macek, the director of the uh, Central European House of Photography in Bratislava and the Festival Month of Photography in Bratislava which is now running. So um, you will see here what has, has been chosen. Each chapter that is here, the authors had a basically free hand to write the story uh, that they wanted. The authors were the ones choosing the right illustrations for the book. 
So each illustration that you will see here, the photographs, were chosen by the authors. Um, each photograph illustrates the text uh, and tells about not only the photographer but also everything that has been happening around him. Um, the project is also important because, not because it shows the small countries in Europe that have great history and great background in photography, but also because, uh, because there are many, many things that have not been cleared within the history of photography. For example, when you look at the first cover of the book, this one, you will see an image that you might have seen many times. Very famous uh, images, these mirror images were done by Witkacy from Poland. Also, Marcel Duchamp did such images. And many people, even historians, might think that Perhaps it was Duchamp who invented this kind of photography. But it's not true. This is an Estonian author, uh, Pasuke, and he was before he was the before Duchamp and he was before Witkatsi. And he was absolutely unknown to us, to the West European photography. So that's why we decided to put him on the cover to demonstrate that there are many things still in the history of photography that have to be cleared out. And it's not the only, only example. You will find many in the book. And um, it is important because the book is meant to be functioning as an educational tool as well not only for students, but for anyone who is interested in photography and even for the experts, for curators who want to work and do exhibitions on photography of the 20th century in Europe, for example, and present them in, the wide, in a wider context. So that's why we decided to do this, I can say, megalomaniac project <laughs> and bring it out onto the market and we are happy because we were really lucky to cooperate with really great people who were so patient, especially with me, I'll tell you. And uh, I was pain in you know where many times, but um, uh, they were amazing, they delivered everything they had to and the texts are really, really great. You will not only learn, but you will also enjoy. Because each text is a very specific story uh, told by great people from photography. So, um, here I am showing you the Czech chapter. I hope it was not too quick. I'm sorry if it was. I was told it's, it's not so much time. And a little bit just to see from the Slovak chapter. Um, some of the photographers you will see here are covered in the Czech, uh, in the Czech chapter. And in Slovak you will find names like Karol Kalaj, Martin Martinček, who are, I think, rather known. Um, William Malik um, and Ladislav Bielik, who is on the cover of this image, which is one of the most famous images from the 1968 um, era when the Russian troops invaded uh, Czechoslovakia and came. Many people think that this is actually taken in Prague. The image is taken in Bratislava and it's in front of the uh, the, the, the law, Faculty of Law of the Comenius University on the 21st of August 1968. So this would be everything that I would say to this book. If you want to have a look, you can. And if you want to buy it, we will be very happy.
And I would like to thank Vladimir for inviting me, thank the Czech Center for hosting us, and also uh, Slovak Institute for supporting my trip to Paris. Thank you so much. And thank you all for coming and being here. I will give a word to Vladimir, who will be talking about this amazing exhibition. Thank you so much. We will start with uh, thanks, uh, because this project uh, usually should be done in some university uh, with a team of 20-30 people, but actually it was done in Central European House of Photography with a team of two people. So it's really unbelievable work to uh, control 75 different writers in many languages and uh, to push them the deadline were already half a year ago. And so, and they succeeded to publish uh, two volumes uh, in four books and two more volumes uh, will be published in two years uh, accompanied by exhibition of European photography in the Slovak National Gallery. And uh, the last uh, thanks uh, to uh, not only director of Czech Center, Mr. Uh, Michal Nepospíšil and his deputy, uh, director um, uh, Jean uh, Gaspar Pahleníček who really helped with exhibition and also with catalog in last minutes because we didn't uh, uh, we didn't even think the catalog will be ready for this opening and we made it last weekend and uh, thank you also to publisher house Kant and who is represented here by uh, Anna Hoffmanova. Thank you so much. And and I will try to uh, explain a little bit about this exhibition and uh, about uh, four important Czech photographers. Uh, it's a little bit strange that it's not in Czech center in Paris in Czech or French languages, but I was asked to uh, use my poor English, but uh, maybe you will understand. Uh, so, uh, exhibition is quite small exhibition. We have nine, 49 uh, photogra 45 photographs and by four uh, photographers. Uh, some of them are quite famous, uh, some are still waiting to be discovered abroad, like um, Eugen Wyszkowski. So, uh, generally speaking, Czech avant-garde photography was completely unknown in 1950s, 1960s, and only in 1970s, due to the first exhibitions of Turkey Kohl and Funke abroad uh, started to show that Czech avant-garde was not only good in cinema or in literature or in uh, painting, but also in photography. And uh, some photographers uh, were uh, unknown even maybe 20 years ago. The first monograph of Jaroslav Ressler, who is now considered as one of the chief, uh, uh, most important uh, avant-garde photographers, who was pioneer of abstraction and constructivism in photography. The first monograph was published only in 2001, and the first big exhibition traveled uh, abroad also the same year. So, Czech avant-garde uh, photography started later than the Czech avant-garde painting. Uh, avant-garde painting were already done before First World War. We know at least uh, some big names like František Kupka, who is well represented also in Santa Pompidou or in Metropolitan Museum and MoMA and other leading institutions. And step by step is uh, also uh, worth discovering that not only Kupka but also Shima, Fortin, and other important artists uh, were not only uh, copists of uh, some French, German, or Russian avant garde painters but made very important works. Uh, the first uh, international known Czech photographer was František Dretiko. And of course, it's not very common to include him to avant-garde photography because he started uh, in uh, Art Nouveau and in symbolism and decadence and such trends because he studied photography in Munich from 2001 to 2003 and he was heavily influenced by uh, Art Nouveau. We can see in his early works uh, that he even painted on the background and made photographs full of erotism in the style of um, Klimt and many other important artists, uh, femme fatales and uh, beautiful ladies and so uh, typical themes which were very common in uh, Czech but also French and German art. 
And we can compare, for instance, his uh, portraits from this period, which were very similar to portraits of uh, Josef Anton Trečka, Czech photographer who lived in Vienna and was also discovered only uh, recently. But very uh, similar portraits were done by French pictorialists and German pictorialists too. But starting 1923, and uh, without any doubt, this, uh, it was under the influence of Jaroslav Ressler, his student and assistant, who started to be a student of Dertico in his studio in uh, 1917, when Dertico himself was in the army. But with some interruptions, he uh, stayed with Dertico until 2025. And we can see influence of Ressler, uh, who was really the first uh, important Czech avant-garde photographer, to Dertico's uh, photographs. The Kikol uh, really liked uh, cubism and uh, futurism and uh, other trends, but he was also influenced how to use light, how to use, uh, for instance, uh, decorations made according to his drawings in the workshop of the National Theatre. And starting 1923 until 1924, uh, was the most important period of his works. And without any doubts, we can see that they are uh, avant-garde. How they used, for instance, uh, shadows and lights, how they used uh, decorations uh, together with naked bodies, and so on. So, uh, I think that the Kikor, that in this period, was one of the most progressive uh, photographers of nudes. He also took part, for instance, in exhibitions uh, like Modern Photography in London, together with Cartier Bresson and André Kertes and uh, some other photographers. This is probably his most famous uh, photograph, Wave. In this exhibition we have another variation of this photograph from 1925, which is probably also the most expensive Czech uh, photography. And uh, it's a variation, there are nine variations of this image, and uh, it's a full of symbols because according to Kiko, life is uh, like a wave, sometimes people are up, sometimes down, but it's also a beautiful combination of uh, body and uh, artificial geometrical uh, decoration. So we can see some more samples from this period. The uh, Kiko left uh, pigment processes like um, gum prints and, and so on, and he was, used only carbon prints. But according uh, his uh, titles, uh, he called them uh, pigment, pro pigment prints. But they are carbon prints, but in Czech literature we are still using his name for pigment prints. So all these photographs are um, pigment prints from negative uh, 24 by uh, 30 centimeters. And the uh, um, he openly uh, showed naked bodies. Sometimes he had troubles uh, in countries like United States or uh, United Kingdom. Some photographs were censored, some were not able to be in, in exhibitions because they were almost pornographic, according to some uh, jurors and some local politicians. But at the same time, the Kiko also uh, was very successful in market. He sold photographs to uh, many collectors, uh, not only in Czechoslovakia, but also abroad, for contemporary many funny prizes, like ten dollars for one piece. And uh, he was considered a really very important author. Many photographers uh, did, in his way, in his style, works uh, quite later. We can even in France or in Germany or in even Russia, we can find some photographs of nudes heavily influenced by the Kiko. And we can compare, for instance, uh, the Kiko's uh, quite famous photographs from 1925 to 29, uh, with most famous photograph by Rudolf Kopitz. Uh, Kopitz was born in uh, Silesia, in uh, former. Czechoslovakia and spent 20 years in Czechoslovakia before he left to Vienna and started to be professor at State Graphic School in Vienna. So he's part of Austrian photography but also in small part of Czech photography. 
And uh, we can see how similar are, for instance, these movements uh, in Dirty Cross's works and in Kopitz's uh, movement, it's the title of this famous photograph. And this is a sample how Dirty Cross influenced foreign photographers. I found, for instance, in Greece, uh, one photographer, Nicodora Nicoleris, Doberos Nicoleris, nobody knows anything about him. But he published in uh, local catalogues from Athens and Thessaloniki uh, news which were probably influenced by uh, the Kiko, including his uh, geometrical uh, objects. In 1930, uh, his uh, photographs uh, completely changed. Uh, it also his life changed because he was more and more involved in uh, Buddhism, in yoga, and in uh, Rudolf Steiner's uh, philosophy and left uh, photographs with living models and made and more photographs with cutouts and photographs with uh, abstractions. So we can see also that in some ways he should be part of uh, abstract photography. But for the ethical, these works are uh, full of symbols. This is for instance uh, body, uh, solar living body. It was the uh, title for his uh, circle of his uh, students but uh, in uh, competitions, in ex exhibitions, they usually he usually called his photographs simple as compositions or untitled. As I mentioned, Jaroslav Ressler uh, started with the Kiko's uh, assistant uh, when he was uh, 15 years old only and stayed in his uh, studio until 25. And uh, without a doubt, he was really uh, the most progressive and uh, most uh, the first uh, Czech avant-garde photographer. Uh, but we can also see influence of his master, of the Kiko. Uh, Ressler, for instance, used technique uh, from oil prints even in 1940s. And nobody from uh, avant-garde circle could use uh, pigment processes. But uh, Ressler did it. And this is a portrait of his uh, for, uh, former wife, Gertruda Fischerová, who also was assistant in the Kiko studio. She was eight years older and also a good photographer. It's another couple of portraits of Gertruda, one in negative, one in positive print. And uh, we can't, uh, we, we have to mention that also, like the Kiko, he was a good painter and he made uh, excellent drawings. Uh, in style of cubism and uh, futurism, so we can see some of them. Just recently was one exhibition uh, fully devoted to uh, wrestlers' paintings, not uh, to photographs. And uh, we can see, for instance, uh, there is no difference between con uh, almost unknown drawing from 1923 and very famous uh, work called The Dancer or Taraco. In old literature, we can uh, uh, read that it's a photograph, but it's not photograph. It's a painting uh, reproduced in photography. So, in some books uh, by Antonin Dufek and some other authors, you can uh, read that it's a very famous photograph. Unfortunately, it's not. It's, it's a uh, reproduction of painting. And this is the first avant-garde photograph. It's uh, called Opus One. It's from 1919. And uh, Ressler was uh, uh, living in a studio of the Kiko, and he made this composition, constructivist composition, with uh, some bottle uh, as early as 1919. It means five years before Rochenko started to make constructivist photographs. But of course, almost the same time when Coburn or Paul Strand did such uh, first constructivist works. This is another famous picture done in the Kiko's uh, studio, uh, Skylight. Uh, it's from the room where the wrestler lived. And uh, wrestler also made uh, photographs. Photographs start, started with very fashion uh, in the beginning of the 20s. Not only Man Ray, but also Christian Schad and uh, Laszlo Morinat and other photographers and artists made photographs. And uh, they were published in uh, Prague in uh, avant-garde magazines, but also in exhibition um, Bazar Moderního umění, Bazar of Modern Art in 1923. And it was the first foreign publication of uh, Menrej's Reogram. 
because Carter Tiger bought an uh, album called um, La Chambre de Lisier in Paris and one la uh, year later he, uh, published this, uh, he published these photographs in Prague. And uh, also Lasso Molinac had many connections as a Czech artist. He uh, very often had lectures in Brno and in Prague and published many works in uh, Czech artists, uh, Czech magazines. But anyway, Ressler was uh, also a very important uh, author of uh, photograms. Uh, probably the first one that done already in 1923. And, uh, but they were lost. They were in some exhibition in Germany, so originals were lost. And early photographs by Ressler are a little bit later, from 1925 to 1929. This is one of them called Smoke. And these are very rare samples of uh, negative photograms. He made a photogram and made a negative reproduction of this photogram and exhibited negative photogram. And we can compare, for instance, how similar the restless works, uh, this works by uh, Pere Catalapic, uh, Catalanian photographer, or Emil Godes, another Catalanian photographer, they use the same motifs almost in the same time. And also, uh, Ressler was important for beginning of abstraction. Uh, he didn't make only photographs, but made also uh, photographs with camera, with lens, which looked like photograms. Uh, he was not the first in this field. Uh, Francis uh, Joseph Rougier, for instance, made such abstractions uh, a little bit earlier. But Ressler did such very important photographs, very progressive photographs uh, from 1923. He usually put a camera on tripod and uh, made uh, um, this re a reflector, this light, moved uh, in, during longer exposure. So sometimes these photographs look like photograms, but they are not. They are very progressive, even uh, in international context. Another kind of abstractions that are made by wrestler from paper. He cut out uh, different papers, sometimes black and white, sometimes uh, green papers and so, and made some small constructions with uh, these papers. And also, it's very early, it's around 1923 to 1925. You can see some in this exhibition as well. And uh, he went even farther when he uh, put together two negatives and made uh, composition with two negatives of the paper. And sometimes he made even drawings, uh, two negatives, uh, one positive, but also drawings around. And uh, it's like a new typography, it's like a typography by Taike or um, Franz Roch and so on. And also he was the only uh, photographer, professional photographer, who was invited to uh, avant-garde group De Vezio. A group uh, was founded in 1920 by young artists. The leader was Karel Tiger. And uh, De Vezio, uh, established own style of collages. Not Dadaist, not Syrahist collages, but uh, they know, of course, the German collages, Dadaist collages by Aus Os Osman, by uh, Hannah Herrick and so on, but they established so-called poet picture poems. It's a term by uh, Karl Tiger. Uh, it's a um, confrontation of text and uh, pictures, pictures from postcards, from uh, real photographs, uh, from drawings and so on. And very often uh, motifs were exotic countries, modern life, uh, sports and so on. We can see now two collages by Tiger himself, and uh, probably the most famous work by this Devetsil group is a book called Alphabet. It's a common work of uh, poet Vitislav Nezval and uh, typography by uh, Karel Tiger. Uh, Milcha Mayerova was a dancer, and uh, Karel Paspa was a photographer. And this book is really very important uh, common work of uh, four different uh, medias. Ressler himself did excellent collages. 
some of them were published in uh, magazines like Red, Stavba, and uh, in, uh, himself was invited to be a member of the Rietzil. But he was very different from other members. He was really introvert, so he didn't come to uh, cafes and uh, restaurants like almost all other members each, each night. Uh, he was, uh, should be called, like external member, member of the Rietzil. Anyway, his collages are very similar to collages of Taiga, again, motifs of uh, transport and American <coughs> architecture and uh, exotic countries and, and so on. And also industrial objects. He was very interested in radios. He constructed radios himself. So very often in his photographs and collages are motifs of radios. And uh, this is a cover of Red, the most important Czech avant-garde magazine, with a uh, wrestler's collage on cover. Also, he liked uh, modern technique, modern uh, buildings like Eiffel Tower and Petrin Tower in Prague. And again, it was something common between avant-garde artists. We can see, for instance, a view of a German crew from uh, Bridge in Rotterdam and Miroslav Ressler, a very similar photograph of Petrin Tower in Prague from 1925. And uh, detail of the same tower, which is almost like uh, abstract composition. In 1925, uh, Ressler and his future wife uh, went to Paris and started, he started to work in Studio Laurel and uh, some other advertising studios and uh, made a lot of photographs from Eiffel Tower. So we can see some samples of uh, collages with motive of Eiffel Tower. And also he made uh, new objectivity photographs of industrial objects, uh, beauty in uh, some industrial objects. And uh, now uh, we can see how common happens that his advertising photography started to be a free work. And uh, we can see, for instance, this beginning is uh, advertising for uh, some pasta, for teas, and another advertising for parfum. And this is already free photographs, it's a um, drawing on uh, white paper. And together they established probably the most famous wrestler photograph which was used, for instance, for cover of uh, Chicago Art Institute, uh, Art Institute of Chicago book for 150 years of photography. And uh, in Paris, uh, they probably should stay in Paris forever, but uh, happened in, in 1925, uh, he took power, uh, part in some demonstration, uh, spent one day, one night in jail, and uh, it was a catastrophe for him. He uh, didn't uh, tell anybody, including his wife, she was uh, at that time in Prague, what happened and the wife uh, found him uh, thanks to a Czech consul in Strasbourg in one hospital in France. Uh, family moved him to Prague and uh, he, moved, uh, he opened his own studio and made quite commercial photography until the beginning of the 50s. Only in the beginning of the 50s he started to make again very fresh and very modern uh, photographs in the style of uh, 1960s. Very often he used uh, prism and very, very often he used sabatier effects and so on. So again, already as quite old and almost unknown photographer, he started to be uh, very avant-garde, very fresh uh, author. He was also influenced by um, Kafka and uh, Jewish, uh, Jewish society in Prague. So some works are symbols of Kafka or some uh, Jewish symbols. And he made in the end of his life also very uncommon combinations of three color uh, negatives together. When he died, he was almost forgotten photographer and only step by step uh, some exhibitions were done and some more graphs are published 
and now Ressler is considered together with uh, Jaromir Funke as a really pioneer, broadcast pioneer of Czech uh, avant-garde photography. Funke uh, is another sample of uh, not only photographer but also theorist, the teacher of photography and a very influential organizer of exhibitions and so on. He was from a wealthy family in Korin, small town near Prague, like 30 kilometers from Prague, where it just happened that three important photographers lived in the same town, uh, Josef Sudek, Jaromir Funke and Eugen Witkowski. Uh, Funke uh, didn't, study didn't study photography, he studied law, he studied medicine, but never photography. But anyway, he took part in exhibitions of uh, uh, Corin Camera Club. In the big beginning, he made a lot of pictorialist works, very romantic uh, landscapes and uh, genre scenes from uh, streets uh, in Corin or in Prague. But very early, it's a few samples, but very early in 1923, probably under the influence of uh, Paul Strand and maybe some other photographers too, uh, he started to make photograms. But he never published them. He, he even published a, a text uh, about men race uh, uh, rheograms that uh, these are not photographs. They, were, they shouldn't be considered photographs because the camera was not used. But he made himself photographs, but uh, as a top, top secret, he never exhibited them. They were somewhere in his house only. But he wanted to make very similar uh, uh, results without uh, photograms. Uh, with camera, with lens, with uh, ordinary light. Uh, he used the very often uh, room of his uh, future wife as a studio. He never had studio like many other photographers and many important works uh, were done uh, in, his, um, in the room of his other life. It's for instance this sample. For him, um, Object was less and less important, and more and more important was light, light and shadow. And sometimes uh, we even uh, we are not able to recognize object, objects in his photographs. He used, for instance, uh, glass bottles and pieces of glass, but more and more important were um, shadows. So he should be also considered as one of pioneers of avant-garde abstract photography and it's interesting that his works were also used in avant-garde theatres. Uh, Czech avant-garde director Emil František Burian uh, projected Funke's photographs in his performances uh, instead uh, some decorations. We can see that uh, some similarities in contemporary Czech paintings from that period, like Josef Šíma, who actually lived more in Paris than in uh, Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia, or František Foltín, the same uh, Czech painter, but that time in 1920s, 1930s, he lived in Paris. And uh, Funke didn't make only abstractions. He was uh, in, important in almost all avant-garde styles. He was the first uh, after Nessler who made uh, constructivist compositions. This is, for instance, uh, such a photograph called After Carnival from 1924. And he made also new objectivity, the details of ordinary objects, like this is a detail of plates. And uh, we can now, we are not sure if he knew that time uh, plates by uh, Paul Strand very similar works, but probably not published in Czechoslovakia at that time. And another simple uh, composition with frames. And also some industrial objects uh, were in the center of uh, Funke's photographs in the 1920s. And also he made a lot of uh, architecture photographs, uh, like Rochenko, Morinac, uh, Funke made photographs of functionalist architecture. He published a book about uh, Masaryk students' houses in uh, Brno, a book about the new architecture in Bratislava. When he started to be a teacher in Bratislava, he collaborated with uh, local avant-garde magazines. 
And uh, this is a power station I saw in Colin, which is a common object not only for Funke, but also for Sudek, Wyszkowski and other photographers. It was a new building uh, constructed in uh, the beginning of the 1930s. And uh, Funke was also the first Czech photographer who was a uh, serialist, who made serialist photographs as early as 1929, probably influenced by Adje, but Adje windows, shop windows. Uh, Ressler made such uh, series called Reflections in 1929, uh, confrontation of reality and uh, reflection of reality. And it's probably the famous uh, series photograph by Funke from the series uh, The Time Persists. And I already mentioned that Funke was teacher at first in Bratislava, but from 1975 in Prague, and together with Josef M, um, they completely changed uh, the style of uh, study in this same graphic school. Many students had to make photographs of uh, decorations of some geometrical objects in studio, and uh, Funke was a very influential uh, teacher, theoretician and writer. And we can see also influence of uh, man rays, probably electricity, a very famous series by man ray, and this is uh, Funke's uh, exposure of neons in Prague, and it was done like uh, a New Year's greeting card for his director of State Graphic School, Ladislav Sutna. And also portraits, portraits, official portraits, sometimes made, he made, but uh, he made also um, books like uh, Photography Sea Surf Surface. It's a book published in by State Graphic School in the uh, second half of the 30s. And very few uh, nudes, but much more social documentary photographs. Uh, when the school was uh, closed, when the Nazis came to Czechoslovakia to 1939, State Graphic School and all universities were closed and uh, Funke lost his job, so he uh, started to be editor of a uh, magazine from Photographic Horizon, and he published several important articles in this magazine, <coughs> together with his uh, friend, Wyszkowski. Uh, and he died quite soon, he was uh, only 94, uh, nine, uh, 49, when he died in uh, the end of the war. Uh, they were the same ages, Sudek and uh, Funke, both were born in uh, 1876, but Funke lived uh, 30 years longer. Uh, sorry, Sudek lived 30 years long longer. Uh, from these four photographers we have now in our exhibition, probably um, completely unknown abroad, is uh, Eugen Wyszkowski. Uh, Wyszkowski was a photo amateur. He never uh, made uh, advertising, he never lived as a photographer, he was a teacher at secondary, secondary school, and it just happened he was a teacher of Funke. He was one generation older, but uh, Funke in the end of the 20s was already a uh, good photographer. And Wyszkowski started as typical amateur photographer, but very early he made excellent photographs in the style of um, constructivism, new objectivity, abstraction, and so on. So we, we can see probably the most famous photograph, it's called uh, Lunar Landscape. Actually these are collars, and in the middle it's uh, bulk. But uh, it's another version when he put uh, five crowns, uh, I guess, on uh, photographic paper, and it looks like airs. So he was not only satisfied with technically, um, technical, uh, technically well done photographs of uh, technician ob objects like uh, many other new objectivity photographs like uh, Renker Patch and so on. He wanted uh, to show something more, something more metaphorical, lyrical. For him, photography was like advertising how to see uh, in new way, very freshly, ordinary things. So, a few samples by his um, compositions from the 20s and 30s. These photographs were used for poster of uh, Photoclub exhibition in Corinne. 
and he was different from Funke. Uh, Funke usually uh, didn't return to the same motives. He made for a photograph and was satisfied even when technical quality was not very high. But uh, Vyshkovsky uh, photographed again and again the same motives because he was absolutely satisfied. This is, for instance, this uh, motif of isol isolator, uh, insulator, sorry, insulator, insulator. There are so many versions of the same photograph. Vyshkovsky was a well-educated man. He translated, for instance, Sigmund Freud's works from German to Czech, and he was uh, author of Czech-German dictionary, and uh, he was also also excellent writer. He used uh, fresh ideas how to write about photography, uh, partly based on uh, sociology and philosophy. Uh, object of this, this famous photograph is, are two daughters by Vyshkovsky and typical composition in constructivist uh, style. And we can compare how progressive uh, was Vyshkovsky in confrontation with some other photographs. Um, these are Barandov Terraces, and it's a, it was a famous cafe in 1920s and 30s in suburbia of Prague. And almost all Czech photographers took photographs of this uh, cafe. Uh, on the left side is La Jan Lauschmann, important amateur photographer, Arnold Picard. Uh, he was a musician, member of Czech Philharmonic Orchestra, and also uh, amateur photographer. And uh, on the right side is Raumir Josef Ružička. He was a physician uh, who lived in New York, but almost every year spent some time in Prague and uh, was a like a hero for some young photographers. So the same motifs, and the same motif uh, by Vyshkovsky. Uh, much more progressive, he completely uh, changed the uh, perspe perspective of this uh, uh, motif. Downstairs is swimming pool, which unfortunately now it's closed. It's a property of the um, family of Václav Havel, but not uh, Václav Havel himself, but his, father, uh, his brother. And unfortunately, it's four years uh, closed, but in 1920s and 1930s, it was a place to spend nice uh, summer uh, weekends. And we saw already some photographs of ESO uh, power station in Korean, so we can see another one by Eugen Wyszkowski. Sometimes it's very difficult to recognize who is Funke and who is Wyszkowski. And in 1936 he moved to Prague and he started to make more photographs of landscapes. And sometimes also in almost surrealistic way that uh, this, this photograph looks like a boat, like a ship on sea, but actually it's a farm uh, on field. So he wanted to, uh, in metaphorical way, to show uh, objects like completely something uh, different. And also this is not only uh, field and um, pass, but it's also a motive of flag. So I think it's enough because uh, I think it's time now uh, to for your questions, if you have any. Of course, I prepared also some other Czech avant-garde photographers, but I think uh, time is enough to finish because uh, as uh, Michal mentioned, it will be jazz concert in 8 o'clock, so we have to finish soon. Anyway, if you have some questions, I'm ready if I have no answers to answer. If not, again, uh, it's more in this catalog, in, it's in four languages, this catalog, and uh, downstairs there are, there are available also some books in English on Czech avant-garde photography and uh, the monographs of Vyshkovsky and uh, some other photographers. Thank you very much. And I just would like to mention that Vyshkovsky is no more so not known because he's in our book. <laughs> but not only Vyshkovsky wrestler is also in this yeah, yeah, book. Yeah, but you were, say, you were saying that Vyshkovsky is uh, probably Less known than Funke, he is still. Sorry. Funke is really now considered an international known photographer and also he had exhibitions in many, many important institutions. Just now in 
Santa Pompidou for one and a half year uh, for focused photographs were exhibited in permanent exposition. Anyway, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.